We have a unique ability to experience the world around us. Our bodies are equipped with sensorial detectors, yet the main intervenient in our process of smelling, touching or seeing something is not our nose, our skin or our eyes, but our brain. Another stimulus invokes a perception. We encode the map of the world as a neuronal representation. Neuroscience is concerned with understanding the relevant mechanisms in this complex process. In particular, visual perception is a central research area. Most of the visual information that a scene conveys is contained in spatial and temporal variations in light intensity. The process starts in the eyes. When the retina receives light, its frequency patterns are printed onto a layer of photoreceptors. If in the visual field a pixel is next to another one, these will also be encoded in side-by-side -side neurons. We obtain a retinotopical map. The retina also contains ganglion cells. These neurons normalize the inputs from the photoreceptors in relation to the full image statistics. Their signal highlights rapid changes in light intensity. However, each ganglion cell has a receptive field. It only responds to stimuli in a particular circular patch of the retina. The next step is the principal pathway going from the retina to the primary visual cortex V1. As with ganglion cells, Neurons in these higher areas have specific receptive fields. But additionally, these neurons also have another important characteristic. They are selective, tuned to distinct stimulus features. For instance, V1 neurons are tuned to a preferred orientation. They respond strongly to stimuli lines with that special inclination. Neurons at higher levels in the visual pathway are increasingly selective. Following V1, two main paths are organized the ventral stream and the dorsal stream. Neurons in the ventral stream's higher areas are tuned to faces and objects, and neurons in the dorsal stream are tuned to movement direction and stimulus speed. These are the feed-forward transmissions of information. However, visual pathways are bidirectional. Superimposed in each feed-forward, there is a feedback pathway in the reverse direction. Accounting for this mechanism, neurons can be portrayed as adaptive processors. They can function in different states. For the same input, neurons can perform distinct computations, suiting the instructions that they received via feedback. The higher level brain areas convey information about the behavioral context. Receiving it, lower level neurons can then adapt by changing their tuning and altering their correlations to other neurons involved in the same process. Therefore, feedback allows the encoding of more relevant information for each situation. Within a given context, each neuron's response is made more significant, more informative, and in turn the full system becomes more economical. In this way, through feedback and feedforward, every cell accounts for information coming from multiple brain areas and processing stages, and thus encapsulates a much greater universe of activity. There is an interesting phenomenon related to these mechanisms called surround modulation. If an oriented line is presented within a cell's receptive field, the neuron will fire a response. If the same line is instead presented outside the receptive field, then by definition no response will be produced in that neuron. However, if the stimuli are presented jointly in both locations, then the result will be the modulation of the neuron signal. This effect can be facilitatory or inhibitory according to the two stimuli relative characteristics. For example, a suppression effect is observed in V1 cells when the surround stimulus is a bar with the same orientation as the one presented in the receptive field. This makes intuitive sense. It is efficient for the brain to expect the statistical probable configurations of the world. In fact, in a natural image, a line will probably be followed by another with similar inclination in its vicinity. It is not so critical to encode this baseline observation in an enhanced manner. This is where surround modulation comes into play, as it inhibits the participating neurons' responses. But what about other kinds of images? In my thesis, this will be the tackled problem for motion visual scenes. What is the brain's spatial organization of surround modulatory responses, and how does it depend on the neurons' tuning to different visual stimuli? In particular, I will focus on finding a set of rules that mediate V1 responses in transgenic mice while they observe moving gratings with varied properties. Understanding how neurons respond to these inputs entails profound information about feedback mechanisms and functional principles. It can further provide insight into perceptual neuroscience. 
How do we see when we look?